Okay, so let's get started. Yeah, today's topic is Java Beans and uh, in terms of importance scale, I gave uh, four, which means this is very important concept to understand in Java. So let's move on. So we will cover uh, Java Bean as a software component model. I will talk about the concept of component model in the following slide and uh, we'll go over some of the core concepts of Java Beans, uh, especially uh, patterns that Java Bean has to follow. Uh, typically it has to have getter and setter method and the properties and then event model. I would say in this presentation uh, event model is probably the most important concept I want you to understand. And introspection, concept of introspection, and the persistence, uh, being persistence. And uh, being, persi being persistence in XML uh, is probably not that important. You can persist your uh, being in the form of XML. So that's what it's saying. Okay, so let's move on. So Java Bean as a software component model. I'm sure you have heard a component model many times. So what do we mean by component? So components, especially in the world of software, we are referring to self-contained and reusable software units. Uh, typically these components are in the form of either visual or non-visual components. Uh, visual components are, for example, buttons, text views, and things like that. So once you actually build your button in the form of Java Bean uh, object, and uh, that object could be, in fact, sent to someone, and then someone can actually use that component to build a button. Uh, so visual software components, if you're using uh, popular IDE such as NetBeans, uh, Eclipse, uh, they have a UI builder uh, tool in which you can drag and drop UI components. These UI components are in the form of, in fact, software components. For example, suppose if I want to build a UI application, I can drag and drop, for example, like a spinner. So a spinner is a Java bean. Uh, is in the form of visual uh, components. So, you know, I can run this application, I should see this spinner uh, UI component being used right away. Okay. And uh, you can immediately, immediately see the result of your work. So if you are using, for example, going back here, you know, I have a Hello World uh, Java Bean, uh, which we are going to build uh, in the hands-on lab. So I can again drag and drop this Java Bean UI component. Again, it's an example of visual UI component. I can change a color. For example, I can change a color to blue, and uh, you can actually see uh, the uh, the change is reflected right away. So this is a Java Bean, and we'll talk about the properties of this Java Bean. And one of the property this Java Bean has what is called the background property. So this is a field of this Java Bean class and basically I'm changing the value and then that change is reflected right away. Okay, So that's what we are talking about here. Uh, Non-visual software components. Uh, so software component doesn't have to be visual. It could be non-visual component. For example, product and customer. Uh, these are Java Bean and that actually capture business logic or and or state. So you might want to ask, what's the difference between, let's say, Java Bean and regular Java class? Okay, so there is not that much difference. The difference between Java Bean as opposed to regular class is uh, Java Bean actually follows some design patterns, which we are going to talk about in the following slide. So let's actually talk about this slide first, and we'll actually talk about that pattern. So Java Bean is portable, platform-independent component model written in Java programming language. Uh, so once you build, for example, that uh, the Hello World Bean or uh, text button, text view button, uh, text view uh, component, 
or the uh, text edit component, those components could be used in different platforms. Uh, the same bean object could be used in, let's say, Windows platform, Linux platform, Mac platform, it doesn't matter. So this is what we are talking about as platform independent components. As we talked about, it could be either visual or non-visual. Okay. And uh, for non-visual components, uh, Java beans are the basis of what is called the POJO based programming. Uh, so I assume some of you have heard the term POJO, plain old Java object. So this concept is very popular for building, let's say, enterprise applications these days. Uh, so the reason it's popular is because if you're building your business logic in the form of POJOs, then uh, you can do the testing uh, the, uh, the better. And, uh, so, and also object-oriented concepts such as inheritance, encapsulation, polymorphism, all those things are in fact taken advantage of. Okay? So anyway, if you don't understand what I'm talking about, uh, that's fine. That is more or less back-end enterprise application concept for now. Okay? So when we say POJO, typically we are talking about Java Bean. So sometimes people call Java Bean just beans. It's a terminology. Okay, so Bean is the same thing as Java Bean. So by using design mode of UI Builder tool, uh, you use a property sheet or a Bean customizer to customize a Bean and then save your customized Bean. What I mean is, suppose I change the value of this Hello World, uh, the label. UI component and I can save this guy as an object instance and then I can I can send that object instance to someone else and someone else can actually use this object instance to see exactly like this okay beans are also dynamic in the sense that properties can be changed during runtime so what we have changed here is I changed background property of this bean but this it could have a lot of other, let's say, properties, and those properties could be changed during runtime based based on some business logic. Okay, moving forward. So core concepts of a Java Bean. So you might want to ask, how does a build a tool that I was showing you with the NetBeans know the properties of that particular bean, in this case, uh, the hello world uh, bean. Okay, so it somehow knows. So UI tool in this case, somehow UI tool knows that it has a background property, border property, display, memory property, foreground property, and things like that. So how does it know? Okay, the reason this UI tool knows about these properties, and in fact methods as well, is because it's using what is called introspection, okay, or reflection. You can think of those two at the moment as the same thing. So anybody can poke on a particular Java Bean component object instance and can figure out what are the set of properties, okay? So it knows that it has, for example, background property, Okay, by using introspection. The reason that introspection works is because the Java Bean follows some design patterns, meaning it for the property of color, it should have get color method. So this is the uh, accessor method that we learned in our previous session, right? So this is a getter method and this is a setter method. So when I change background of, let's say, hello world label bean uh, in here, uh, it, first of all, it will use get background method to find out what is the value of that background. When I change this guy to some other color, it will use set background method to set it. Okay, so it's using getter and setter method uh, or the, uh, the accessor or mutator method, those are the same thing, to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to access and change properties. Okay, so that's what we are talking about. Okay, 
So in addition to property, by using introspection or reflection, it can find out all the possible methods. In fact, it actually checks the methods first. It will check whether it has a getter and setter method, and it's going to use these two methods for getting the value of color property and setting the value of color, the, uh, color property. Okay? And it also finds out uh, event information as well. Okay? So this is the difference between Java Bean as opposed from the regular Java class. So regular Java class doesn't have to have getter and setter method. If that class, regular Java class, has getter and setter method, now you can think of that particular Java class as a Java Bean. Okay? So you can think of Java Bean as a subclass of regular Java class, and this Java Bean has basically has setter and getter methods. For its properties. Okay, so properties of a bean, so again background, color, and things like that. So for visual Java bean, it typically has the, uh, the uh, visual properties such as a color or background and things like that. For non-visual uh, Java bean, uh, for example savings account Java bean, uh, it might have a property called like a balance. Okay, so this is not visual, but it is a still property, and uh, the savings account will have getter, setter method of this balance property, meaning get balance or set balance. Okay, so as I said before, beans expose properties like a balance or color through accessor methods, so they can be set and get, meaning getter and setter method. So UI build a tool, introspect, on a bean to discover its properties and expose those properties for manipulation. So how does it do it? Again, it checks if the bean has this getter and setter method. And if it does, then ah, it will say, oh, I can use a get getter method to find, to get the value of this xxx property. And I can set the value of that xxx property by calling set xxx method. Okay? So you can see why this getter and setter method is an important concept. Okay? Okay, moving forward. Events. So event is again one of the most important concept in this presentation. So I want you to get the uh, I want you to have a special uh, give a special attention to this topic. Beans use events to communicate with other beans. So when you click a button, uh, the, uh, the button is reacting button clicked event, meaning when you press a button, a uh, button clicked event is generated. And anybody who has an interest of receiving that uh, event will react to it. Okay. So a bean that is to receive events, we call event listener or event handler. First of all, before event listener or event handler, the same thing, gets the event from event source, it has to register with that event source bean that it has an interest of receiving that event. Okay, so let me just repeat this one more time. A bean that is to receive events so we call event listener or event handler registers with a bean that fires the event. So the bean that fires the event is called event source. So we have a two classes involved here, uh, in fact three classes. So the first class is event listener class and second class is event source class and then we have event class. Okay? So three classes will be involved. So UI tools can examine the bean and determine which events can bean can fire and which can handle. It will also actually has a means, meaning by using introspection, to see whether it has some event handler method, event registration method. And we'll like to talk about this one in the following slide. So for example, it can check whether button bean has event handler method associated with it. Okay, so I yeah, will talk about the uh, event in a bit more detail using hands-on lab. 
persistence. Persistence enables beans to save and store their state. So suppose if you have create a bean object instance, okay, so that bean object instance could be, let's say, this uh, the uh, simple hello world label uh, bean object instance. You can serialize it, meaning you can save the state of this object instance. And then it's just a byte, it's a, just a file, okay, it's a stream of bytes. And then you can send that. Uh, stream of bytes to someone else and then someone else can recreate it okay so you know we are going to talk about this concepts of serialization and deserialization later on but important for now for you to understand is that java bean java bean object instance i'm talking about object instance not the class object instance can be in fact persisted meaning it can be saved okay and then can be restored later on by somebody else. Okay. okay, so you know you can change the properties of a bean. So I change the background color of that hello world bean object instance, and then I can save it. And once I save it, again the saving is done through what is called the serialization. And once I save it, it's just a file. And I can give that file through email to someone else, and someone else can restore the bean object. Uh, in his program and it will contain the property value that I set like uh, you know whatever background property set I uh, value will be uh, will be uh, restored okay so again this is uh, the uh, the difference between Java bean ver versus the uh, regular class so beans methods are no different from regular Java method and can be called from other beans or scripting environment so again, the only difference between Java Bean class from regular uh, the uh, Java class is that Java Bean is the method it has is in the form of getter and setter method. That's pretty much it. Okay. Okay. So as we talked about the beans of example the beans in the form of visual uh, beans. Uh, like a button, slider, text edit, and drop down, and things like that. Okay, so in the f so as we s you know see these are all these palettes are all in the form of visual uh, Java beans. Okay, and uh, these Java beans are in fact imported. So in that beans comes with a set of Java bean object instances. Okay, so like a spin object instances, separate object instances, they are just the uh, Java jar files. Okay, uh, and uh, those Java jar files, you can actually use those Java jar files in, let's say, another ID like in Eclipse. Okay, and uh, Eclipse GUI builder will figure out ah, this is a spinner and this is a text plane, pane, and it is an editor pane, and uh, you know you you can actually use these components in the uh, in another editor because these are all in the form of, let's say, the object instances serialized into a jar file. Okay, so we'll talk about how we can actually make our own uh, jar file that contains a Java Bean object instances in the form of serialized instances uh, the, later on in the hands-on lab. Okay, so as we talked about, non-visual beans could be, let's say, savings account, spelling checker, you know, so any Java classes that has this getter and setter method uh, in the form of Java beans. They are Java beans. So this is button beans, okay, and these are slider bean, okay. So this is in the form of Java bean object. This is again in the form of Java beans object. Question from uh, let's see who actually asked this question uh, from Dimple: Is encapsulation and Java bean the same? No. So encapsulation is one of, let's say, the uh, the uh, object-oriented programming concept in which implementation are uh, hidden from the user of that class. Okay, so uh, the uh, the Java Bean. Uh, so you know, Java Bean is in a sense using encapsulation to hide the implementation of getter and setter method. Okay. So they are not the same, but you know, encapsulation is used for any kind of implementation uh, to hide implementation detail from the user of that class. 
in this case Java Bean. Okay, so event model. So you know we'll go into event model in a bit more detail in this presentation as well as in the uh, hands-on lab. Any questions so far? Okay. So as I said before, in Java Beans event model, there are the uh, two active players, and then we have uh, event class. So event source is the one that actually fires or generates an event. Okay, so like a button. When you have a button in your GUI application, if you click the button, uh, basically uh, button clicked event gets generated. Okay, so in that sense, button is event source. And this event source is sometimes called event sender or event generator because it's the one that actually uh, generate an event. Now, then we have event listener. Okay, so event listener is the one that actually listens to the event and handles the event. So we call it sometimes event handler or event receiver. Okay, so these three things are the same. Okay, event listener, event handler, and event receiver. So this is an object that is interested in receiving events, okay, and then it will receive events from the event source. So what do I mean by an object interested in receiving events? Okay, so uh, the uh, the uh, what this means is that event listener has to register with event source to indicate its interest of receiving events. Okay, so that's what is this is talking about. Okay, so once event listener registered with event source, and then when the event source has an event generated, it will in fact call the uh, a method of this event listener object instance. Okay, so uh, example here, business logic bean. Suppose I have a business logic bean called X Y Z or something. And uh, then it is the one that is interested in receiving an event from an event source. Okay, so when there is a button called the delete file button, so delete file button is event source, and that event source will generate event uh, button clicked event, and then because event listener, meaning this business logic being registered, is interest of receiving events from with the event source, event source will call a method of this event listener, meaning business logic being. Okay? Alright, so the, uh, the uh, and then when you receive the uh, event, so receiving event is basically being called. One of these methods is being called. That's what it means, receiving event. So in that method, it will perform some business logic, for example, actually performing file deletion or something. So we'll actually take a look at the ex example code in a bit more detail in the hands-on lab, so you'll have a better understanding. Okay, so this is something I talked about in previous slide. So how does event source know uh, event listeners? Because when, when event occurs, event source has to call a method of all event listeners. So how does event source know which event listeners to call? Okay, so that's the question that we are asking here. So the reason it knows is because event listeners register their interest of receiving events to the event source. Okay, so how does it register? Uh, because event source event source class provides methods for event listeners uh, to register and unre unregister. So event source provides add xxx remove xxx uh, methods that could be called by the event listener for registration okay all right so we'll see some examples okay so event source maintains a list of event listeners who registered okay so you know once event listeners registered with event source it keeps track of them internally and when event occurs it invokes a method of event listeners Okay. All right. 
So registration, so I said event listeners need to register itself themselves to event source to indicate their interest of receiving event notifications. Okay. So how does it do it? Event source class provides methods that are used by event listeners for registration and unregistration. So they are typically in the form of add xxx listener this is for registration and remove xxx listener this is for unregistration and this xxx is a name of event okay so in the example of button uh, GUI button that inside the uh, GUI application so you might in fact have a button object so in this case button object will function as event source so button class has, so by the way, button is JDK provided class. So if you take a look at the uh, button class, uh, you will find it has what is called add on click listener method and remove on click listener method. Okay. So event listeners will use this method of event source class to register its interest of getting event notification. And you can call remove on click listener method of this button class to remove itself from the list. Okay. Once it removed from the list, then it will not receive event notification from the event source in this case button. Okay. So steps of writing custom event handling. So you know if you get confused so far, I'm sure you uh, some of you are in fact confused. <laughs> That's perfectly fine, and we'll actually see some more examples to uh, to point key as T concept. Okay. Uh, okay. So let's see. Uh, the steps of writing custom event handling. So you have to create event class. Okay. So typically, you are going to if you're creating your custom event class, you you are going to name it as xxx event, or you can use event classes that are already provided in JDK. So there are some events classes that are already provided in JDK, it's like an action event. Okay, so you can extend this guy, or you can create something new. Okay, so in the hands-on lab, uh, we are going to use action event for button based UI application exercise and then we'll create our own event uh, for non button uh, the uh, the application okay all right and then you are going to write listener interface and implementation now we haven't talked about the concept of interface and implementation yet Interface and implementations are very, very important concepts. So this is, in fact, the uh, level five, importance level five. For now, you can think of interface is a set of methods, and implementations are providing actual implementation of those methods. Okay. Okay. So, in terms of writing event listener you are going to write interface first and then provide implementation class of that interface okay uh, again if you are using button uh, the uh, the uh, related application then you can leverage what is called the action listener interface that is provided in JDK okay so again we'll actually play around we'll actually build the two uh, example code one is using this action listener and the other one is using our own listener interface and implementation and then event source as I said before event source should provide add xxx listener and remove xxx listener these two methods are used by event listener object for registration and unregistration okay all right And then you are going to write what is called the glue class. So this is basically business logic uh, that register event listener object to the event source by calling add xx listener method. In our example code, you know we are basically using main method to provide this glue class. So this is example uh, code that we are going to take a look in our hands-on lab. So if you, you know, if you run this application. 
and you are going to click uh, fire event then we have this message being displayed okay so let me just run that application so we have a two event examples uh, this one is the one that I'm talking about in the slide so this is GUI application and uh, then this is a button so when I click this button uh, the uh, the uh, event listener received the event and then it will just display this message so it says action occurred in button handler and uh, this is the action event it has received okay okay so let's actually see the code step by step so you are going to write the action event you are going to use action event class that is already provided in JDK okay so you don't have to write the action event class because it's is provided okay now we are going to write event listener interface and in its implementation so again we are going to use action listener interface that comes with the JDK okay so this is used for button kind of application so this interface has what is called the action performed uh, method and it's receiving event and that event is in the form of action event so it's receiving action event object okay so basically you have to provide an implementation called button handler which implements action listener interface and then you are going to provide your business logic inside this action performed method okay so let's see the code so this is my event listener class called the button event handler and then it's implementing this interface called action listener so again this interface is coming from JDK so this is not from me but this is from me button event handler and then so another thing about interface is that when you are implementing it all the method of this interface action listener has to be implemented in your implementation class okay so again we'll talk about this one in a bit more detail when we cover interface and implementation so for now what we have to do is we have to provide implementation of this method because this method is defined in action listener interface and basically what we have done is we are receiving this action event and then we are displaying that message this action occurred in the buff button handler and then we basically uh, you know displaying the information about the event that we have received so that's basically what we are seeing uh, you know here so just running it again Okay, so we have here, because this is a space, and when you click it, uh, you know, this message okay, is coming from here. Okay, so this guy is event listener or event handler class, okay, and this handler class implements the uh, event listener interface, and event listener interface has methods that need to be implemented so in this case it has only one interface method called action performed and this is our handling logic meaning when you receive this event this is what I want to do okay. so Ahmed asked a question about what is the concept of EDT event dispatcher thread okay so we'll talk about that later on okay so write event source uh, class uh, so we are going to use button class uh, which is event source class again this button class is already provided in JDK okay and this JDK uh, as, I mean this button class as event source has add action listener and remove action listener method so these methods are the ones that are used by event listener for registration okay so let's see uh, the glue code is the one in fact creating all the object instances and then we will register event listener to the event source okay so this is the code so again this is the code that we have seen here okay so what let's so we create a JFrame and then we created a text area okay so this is a swing API's and then we create a buttons so what we have is sorry Oops. 
So this is a J frame, and then we have a button, and then we have this uh, the text area. Okay. Okay, so we have a three UI components. These guys are all Java beans. Okay, J frame, Java text area, J button, they're all Java beans. Okay, now we are going to call add action listener method of event source class, in this case button. And then we are providing event listener object. So we create event listener object called the button event handler. Okay. And uh, so we basically, this is a registration. Okay, and the other things are all UI stuff. Okay, so what happens when an event occurs? So event source invokes event handling method of all event handlers, meaning event listeners, register to it. So button event handler has implementation of action performed, right? So this action performed method of all event handler object instances will be invoked okay all right so let me actually show the code one more time so this is action event listener okay so